Okay, everybody, this is Cindy. I am here with one of my favorite all time people, and uh, we were just talking. There are certain people um, that I get to call friends that have immersed themselves in truth teachings and in living that um, so completely that you could sort of feel it just by being in their presence. And John Mundy for sure is one of those people. So I don't know, I'm getting emotional. So it's my joy to introduce you to him and invite you to um, join him live and in person when he's teaching next month at the Know Thyself Conference. Uh, you could register for free and the link is right there in the description. And I will also, uh, I'll add it to the comments in just a minute, but John, it's just such a pleasure to Thank be you, here with you. Thank you. Um, I'm assuming we're, we're going live here on one of the original Course in Miracles Facebook pages. Okay. Um, and so people that are listening to us now that are finding us on their stream, at least know what A Course in Miracles is. Yes. And so I'm imagining they probably know who you are. But uh, just in case a straggler comes through, um, it would be awesome if you take just a few minutes and introduce yourself however that flows through. Okay, well, um, I, as, first of all, as far as A Course in Miracles is concerned, um, like a lot of other Course in Miracles teachers, uh, I've been seeking uh, all my life. I've uh, been a minister for 60 years, hard to believe, but that's true. Taught university for 40 years. Um, I started, you know, I grew up on a farm in Missouri in the 40s and the 50s, and there was something in the woods and around there that just was pulling me to look for something more. And I always knew that it wasn't gonna be a regular job uh, or, or anything like that, that it would be involved in doing this search. We're all involved in the search, whether you're consciously aware of the fact that you're on a search or, or not. So that actually led to my meeting, Helen Shookman, the scribe of A Course in Miracles. Helen actually came to a workshop that I was leading uh, in Chicago in 1975, along with Bill. They were both there. Uh, I think to meet Edgar Casey's son, Hugh Lynn Casey, who was the keynote speaker at that conference, but I don't know anything about that. <clears throat> they came to the workshop I was doing. I had just had my first book published, which was called Learning to Die. And um, then we met after it. The next year, that would have been 74, I wrote a letter that got published in the Journal of Transpersonal Psychology, expressing interest in being in contact with people in the fields of psychotherapy and spirituality. Bill saw that, told Helen he thought it was a call for her to complete the writing of the psychotherapy pamphlet, which came with the course. She agreed that it was. She called me in April 1975. Interestingly enough, we live very near each other. Uh, she was on... East 17th Street, I was over on West 19th, Crosstown in Manhattan. I went, met Helen, Bill, Ken. <clears throat> she gave me the manuscript <clears throat> of the psychotherapy and what to start. And that was the start. And from there on, I knew that this was it. And this was what I was looking for. It was what I was teaching, except I was teaching Eastern philosophy and Zen Buddhism and Carl Jung and Pierre Teller de Chardin and all these other forms representations of what the Course calls the universal truth. And so I became friends with Helen after that. She sort of became like a mentor for me, more like a mother hen, more like a mother than anything. And my mother did a great job, but uh, Helen, but she wasn't a psychologist like how I was. And it's a turnout that was during my thirties. And I went through a lot of uh, emotional upheaval stuff in the romantic field during that time. And she helped me through all that plus other things as well, relationship with the church, for example. And so the church, the course has just been my life. It was started in Miracles Magazine in 1985. That would have been 10 years later. Uh, but that's all I do. All I do is study, write, teach with the Course in Miracles. Uh, and I can't imagine a, a better profession. I feel like uh, 
really lucky. Uh, what else can you say? Really lucky to not being, not wondering about, I mean, every day you got to find, you got to do what you got to do, but uh, with pleasure. Uh, this is a wonderful, I've been so blessed to have this job. So that's it. And that's enough introduction, right? Let's go Except into that now I have, a, and every time I ask, I mean, we've done these kind of interviews a couple yeah. of times and I always right. listen, but there's something that always comes up. And this time it's the fact that you did begin, I think is, well, you, at one point you were a Christian minister right? and you did, you know, immerse yourself for a while in Eastern philosophy. Yes. And now it's the course. Right. And, and we're talking about inviting people to go now to a conference that's going to have um, people from uh, that focus on the course, mm -hmm. others that focus on, um, you know, the, the non-dual teachings right. with the flavor, you know, the, the sure. Rupert Spira and Francis Lucille. And there are others that, that really... Um, almost come from the scientific bent right you know we've had people that are using science to prove all these teachings have validity you know sure. so and i'm getting chills so i know this question <laughs> you always know when you're having chills the question oh. isn't coming from your conditioned mind okay so this conference is called know thyself so I know that, well, I don't know anything. I'm curious now from all of that, from all the different flavors that you've tasted, you know, what would you like to share relative to either what truth, how truth looks to you or um, maybe that sort of, when you, when you sit in this space of to know thyself, Mm. You know, how would John, how would truth be expressed through John Mundy as it relates to that? It would be expressed in the same way that it would be expressed to everyone, which is a process of waking up, which is what the Course in Miracles is talking about. The Course in Miracles it says that this is a dream that we're dreaming. Let's go back. You talked about Eastern for a moment. Well, let's go back to Buddha who is like 500 years before Jesus, right? And Buddha has an awakening experience. <clears throat> what happens is that after his awakening, he goes back to the deer park of Benares to meet his former disciples who left him because he became worldly. He started eating again. <laughs> and when they see him coming, they say, there's something different about you. What is it? And he says, I'm awake, I'm awake. That's an incredible thing to be awake. And you think, well, I'm awake. You're perfectly awake. Well, if we were perfectly awake, we wouldn't do some of the silly unconscious kind of things that we do. And we wouldn't be caught in some of the kind of unconscious traps that we're caught in with our resentments and feelings and antagonistic thoughts. We'd really be awake. We'd remember who we are. And in terms of the Course of Miracles, who you are is that you are the Christ. You are son of God or daughter of God or child of God. You know, any of these terms work the same. And in terms of the course, going back to the non-duality part, there's just one mind. There's just one of us here. And that mind is the Christ mind. And what the course is trying to help us to do is to get back in alignment with that mind so that that's the only mind that we follow. Uh, yesterday's workbook lesson from the course 74 was about God's will, God's will and my will being exactly the same will. And that's really true. What you want to do more than anything else with your life is you want to do God's will. Because very simply, that's what makes you happy. <laughs> you know, and when we're not doing that, then we feel like we're, excuse the pun in a way, but off course. So we're off course. We're not, we're not doing what we really want to do. And we can feel it. There's something some anxiety that's going on. Maybe we're making money, but it's not where we want to make money. Maybe you'd like to quit the job. You know, if you, if you got a really good job, you never want to quit. Artists don't want to quit. Musicians often don't want to quit. Raw authors don't want to quit. Something that's really meaningful, that's beneficial to others, you don't want to quit, right? 
And what we're all about, we've all got two jobs in a way. One job is the job we do in the world, which helps us to pay for our rent and take care of our circumstances. And the other one is to wake up. It's to be engaged in this, to be actively engaged in the process. And that's what the Course in Miracles does. The Course in Miracles, and thank God for this workbook, because this is really the part of it that works best. We've got the textbook, the workbook, and the manual for teachers. We all forget Helen was a professor. <laughs> she, she was the one who received the course, right? So she knew how to put it down into this kind of terms. But it's the workbook which works us. And by working us, it enables us to remember. That's the important thing. That's a remembrance because what you're doing is you're remembering who you already are. By already, I mean, there's a self that we all are. You've never lost that self. You cannot lose it. Uh, that's impossible. But you can forget it. And so not forget it so much as you can go to sleep. It, it kind of always stays in the back of the mind there somewhere. But there is a real self that I'd like to awaken to. Well, then what do I need to do to wake up? Well, first of all, I need to have a, <clears throat> a change of mind. Actually, a change of mind about the mind. Because the Course says uh, we're all caught, we're trapped in entertaining two minds. The one mind is this thing we call an ego, which is not who we are, has nothing to do with our reality, looks like it, that's we're very identified with that, the body and the mind and all that stuff that we do in the world and being respected and all that kind of stuff that an ego would demand. And the other one is being the Christ that you already are. I think what happens with Jesus, uh, and I think it happens uh, in his wandering in the wilderness, he's pretty much aware, it's pretty clear, if you read the New Testament, that there's a business he's about at the age of 12, he says this to his parents, don't you know that I have to be about my father's business? By the time he's 30, he's really engaged in this process, he's baptized by John the Baptist in the River Jordan, after that, it says, after that, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit leads him into the desert for a time of testing. He goes through three tests. We won't take time to go what they are, but they're all ways of looking at the ego and saying, no, no, thank you. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do this deeper thing, the thing that I think I'm really being called in truth to do, which is to follow, quote, my father's will, which is the same will that we all have to follow. So once we can begin to get that pathway of alignment worked out, and it's an alignment because the purpose of the course is says so in the very first paragraph is to help us to remove the blocks to the awareness of love's presence. So in order to remove the blocks to the awareness of love's presence, what I have to do is I have to first of all become aware of the blocks. Now we know when we're running into blocks, but then we need to identify the blocks and we have to understand how it is that we actually Put those blocks there ourselves Hi, you think well I've, I've never put these blocks there myself but we did uh we did as a part of our learning it's like that's what this world is the, cor the course is very clear that this world is a school uh or <laughs> at a couple of points it implies that it's a prison uh, it says you know choice is your last remaining freedom as a prisoner in this world in a sense where we're we feel trapped within the context of this world. That's why I think as, as you begin to wake up, it's an experience of joy and relief and, and knowledge of, of God, of the eternal. And, and you're getting clearer and clearer and clearer about that there is a path that leads home. And it's a, it's a unique path. It's a distinct path for every soul. There'll be similarities uh, to other paths. There'll be differences here and differences there. But the course is very clear that it says it's highly individualized. At the same time that it's highly individualized, it's also one road. It's just the many different branches sort of leading into this one truth. And as we come to the one truth, then we get closer and closer to, to being happy, <laughs> you know, <laughs> to being who we were supposed to be. So I recently wrote a little poem what sort of describes this process. So, well, I'll, I'll read this little poem and uh, that'll be kind of it, unless you've got a question or something, we'll do this. So um, this is, the title is To See What Jesus Saw. 
To see what Jesus saw is to do what Jesus did, to let the Christ be fully known and never hid. To see what Jesus saw is to be who Jesus is. To give our minds to him is to become the Christ as well. To become the Christ as well is to be free of the ego's health. To see what Jesus saw is to follow the same self path he trod. To follow the same self path is to find our way to God. To know what Jesus knows is to be oneself right now. To commit oneself to God is to make a solemn vow. To follow God's voice this moment and forever is to join with kindred souls in the beatific great endeavor. So that's that's the that's the process right there. And uh, is that good enough as a starter? <laughs> that's beautiful. I do have another question though before I let you go. Sure. And uh, you came while I was listening to you and. I've been asking different people over the last week. Um, I am, um, there's a lot of fear in the world right now. There's oh, sure. a lot of conflict in the world we see. And um, in different meetings and places that I'm in, people are, uh, people on this path are expressing their fear sure. and their yearning and their desire to do something to help. Sure. And, uh, I uh, am feeling inspired to mute and uh, ask you to respond, you know, from a point of view of all of this that we do for the uh, average Joe who may be living far away from the turmoil, and yet it still appears to break their heart. They're seeing judgment, they're seeing fear, they're right. seeing this yearning to like run and do something. Mm -hmm. would, you, would you respond to that, please? Well, I think the main thing you want to do is not go crazy yourself uh, and not start attacking and not start getting in a process of condemnation. At the same time, there are things that you're going to, first of all, in a very practical way, uh, the organization that I work with, the One Mind Foundation, has sent money. Uh, that's a very practical way. Uh, but more than anything else, I think it's to have a proper perspective. And to think about who, well, in this case, we will use the name Putin, who Putin is. I was talking about a class that I was teaching last night. And um, really thinking about how do, we, how do we see this individual? And keeping in mind that everyone is a child of God. There's no one who's not a child of God. And the light has never gone out. It may be very dim in different dimensions, but it never goes out in anyone. It's impossible. That it completely go up. There's always a spark. Of course, that's what it calls a little spark, this little divine spark, which could be reignited once again into fullness, but in the moment it's hidden. But it's to look for that, it's to look for the spark. And I think one of the ways that I like to think about looking at Putin, uh, I, I did some study on this yesterday. Interesting, I went, ran back into the computer and I read about as much as I could about his childhood. And to see this little boy, this is a little boy. <laughs> Once upon a time, there's this little boy, right? Uh, a similar event happened, if you remember the bombing in Boston back, I don't know, seven, eight years ago, whenever it was. Uh, right after that, that was on a Friday, Saturday, I think they, I think it was on a Friday on Saturday, they caught the guy. And um, I was supposed to speak at a church that Sunday and I went, but I decided to scrap what I had prepared and I, talked about what I call the boy in the boat. So they found this boy in a boat. He'd been wounded. His brother's been killed because of what's happened. Uh, got himself killed. And they've also killed quite a number of other people, injured quite a number, large number of people. And so how, what's he going through? What's, what's going on in this boy's mind as he's laying there in this boat? And more importantly than that, how does God see him? How does God see this person, right? Now, keeping in mind that this is a child of God's, and just like we all are. And that's our job. Our job is to see this child to God and to do what we can to try to, in our own minds at least, help the child find home again, help the memory to come back to the child again. One fellow who's in my group that I work with this last week said, well, how do I do this? And then he, he sort of paused for a moment. He says, 
well, I guess I do this by being nicer to my wife. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, dealing with what's in front of me right here, right now, you know, uh, expressing the kindness here, engaging forgiveness right here, right now, be, being at peace, more, more peaceful right now. And by the way, in terms of A Course in Miracles, it's very really helpful to, to the exercise that I did this morning from the workbook, it's 75, about the light of God shining in me. And when you read that, it's just, it provides you with such incredible comfort to know that you can, you cannot be lost. That's the important thing. You cannot be lost. You can give your mind back to the whole mind. You can see the Christ again and you can be saved yourself. And in that process, the process of becoming something saved ourselves then facilitates the process of saving whatever, whoever, whatever is around me and beyond me in a, in a much higher sense. And there's nothing to worry about in the sense that I know this sounds really heavy duty, but even if these bodies should die, even if this disappears, that has nothing to do with reality. It has nothing to do with the kingdom of heaven because the Course of Miracles is very clear. This is not a real world. The real world is called heaven. Heaven's eternal. And we're already there, even though we're dreaming that we're not there. So again, as we started off earlier, the process is one of awakening to the memory of the truth, who I really am, who you really are, and who we really are. We are really loving human beings. And we really love each other. And our job is just to go ahead and keep loving each other right here, right now, wherever it is. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, John. Sure. And if you're at the sound of my voice, uh, do two things. Hit share so you can tell your friends and all those you care about, about this, about John and about the upcoming conference. He is one, man, I don't have the number, but I know there's always over 20 different people. We're all going to 27, is that what it's? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a weekend filled with so much light, so much opportunity to shelve the fear and be in truth. So please come and join us. And then so hit share and then click the button and go ahead and register and leave your comments. I'll come back and read them all. And I love you, John. Thank you so much. Thank you, Cindy. It's nice having some time with you. Very good.